Hello there and welcome. What we're bringing you now is an interview with the glorious defender of the Reich, master of propaganda. He's right here, right now. He's Imperial Dane. Hello and welcome. Hello, hello. May have botched your your introduction slightly. Uh, there's a few items I missed, but uh, you know you've you've got a lot of al accolades, so it's difficult. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, it certainly was a better job than you did yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> possibly, possibly. <laughs> um, if you've not watched the casts with Imperial Day and Alt yet, go and watch them. They're highly entertaining. Some excellent strats are used, and it's a very interesting matchup. Um, what did you feel about the overall series, Dane? The overall series, I mean, the games between me and Alt, well, they were quite interesting. I mean, I was certainly a bit, you know, uh, disappointed with the initial loss. I felt, you know, my usual strong spot with the defensive there. But, of course, at the same time, you know, I could have pushed a bit harder. Yeah. So, so after that, I... Sorry to interrupt. We're oh. talking about, for the, for the viewers, we're talking about the first game on Longer with the Imperial Day North as Germans. Um, taking up a prepared position play on the the, you know, the, the larger field area in the centre. And um, it didn't go quite to plan, did it, Dane? No, not quite. It was part of the shock too, which we kept pushing up with on the left flank. And they kept, you know, when I tried to sort of push out there, he pushed back and it hurt me more. And then some minor losses here and there rather hurt me as well. But in part, I think it was just because I was too settled in and not pushing hard enough. Yeah, possibly. I, I described you as a rock for him to break himself against, but then all of a sudden that rock just seemed to crumble. It was it all happened within a matter of a minute, I believe. Yeah, and it was rather quick. He came up with a flamethrower tank. I was concerned with that. Then he hit me from the other side. Incendio actually got called in in the middle of everything, and he just hit perfectly, and that rather tore everything apart. Were expletives uttered when this happened? Were you, you know, did it all no, go? No, I was. I just sort of went oh balls and then well <laughs> GG GG quit what did you think then going into the second game you had to play Soviets which is your least preferred faction yes well I thought you know well it's time to crank this up a notch and get aggressive get aggressive and how did you combat that second game well you know I mean I s went for the usual start I go for search which I usually tend to spread out I try to sort of feel up my opponent figure out where is the exact position then I can figure out well I can flank from there and then I went up for my currently favourite Soviet doctrine, which is Reserve Army, and went in with the Irregulars and afterwards the submachine guns, and basically tried to keep up the pressure as much as possible. Yeah, that was a highly irregular um, tactic, because we don't actually see that doctrine used very much in the competitive games. I think it caught in by surprise, especially. Yeah, but he hadn't played in some time as well, but, you know, still... I mean, to a certain extent, it didn't help that he initially actually spread his troops out too far. I mean, that first MU-42 he had there was way too open for me to actually sort of easily get in there. Definitely. So, after two pretty damn epic confrontations, it brought you to, to, um, to the fields of Kolodny. And now, one comment I'd like to make is, I, I, I don't know how true this is in your eyes, but I, I build you as a a less micro-intensive player, but more of a strategical kind of um, experienced player. Alt, low on experience, but very good with his uh, motor neuron kind of quick micro-decision making ability. What do you feel about that? Oh, it's probably true. I mean, I'm always sort of inferring more towards tactics and strategy rather than micromanagement because I'm not really good with that. Yeah, well said. So it brought you to the field of Colodny Firma and um, you were Germans again. And I don't think you did what he was expecting you to do. Probably not. I rather had an impression, you know, okay, most of his units are in the north. I know where his heavy mortar is. I also know that place is likely open. You know, I think I'll uh, do a bit of a gambit here. And then I knew I had my half-track. I popped my assault guns in it. I called in the mechanized assault group. And then I pretty much went full blitzkrieg into his base. That's how you got in his base. I uh, I was a bit disorientated in the cast because it all happened so quickly. I thought you'd, um, you know, on the old Angerville map in the south, I thought you'd exploited some kind of um, blind spot with the nope. MGs. No, just a just simple half track. Simple half track, yes. And then the mechanized assault group following up, then the other half track. Pretty much gunning down everything else he had. <laughs> yes. And then unfortunately for him, he, he retreated some low, lowly health squads and, uh, yeah. It was all over. It was a mass extinction of Alt's army within about t with under under ten minutes, I believe. About eleven minutes. He lost everything he had, and then it was sort of <laughs> yeah. half a minute where he sort of went silent. And then, well, I just lost everything that I had, didn't I? 
You did indeed. So it was a tactical masterstroke in my mind. And I'm not trying to uh, flay you too much here, but you went slow, pa passive kind of, you know, prepared positional play. And then in the next game, your assault grenadiers balls to the wall blitzkrieg play. And there's no way he put, he spent 400 manpower on a mortar that was useless, because obviously, <laughs> um, so it worked yeah. out very well for you. Um, yeah, I like to basically vary my style of play so I don't become sort of too easily quick to figure out. Yeah, it'd probably make a good poker player in that in that sense. Um, I'm just bringing up the brackets now for the uh, enjoyment of people watching this. We've got you on the right side of the bra bracket against a player called Sturm Tiger Giap. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, yeah. What do you think? How do you feel about that? I'm worried. I know he's a good player. I've only faced him once. I did win, but I mean, also looking at his replays, he's a very aggressive player. He's very mobile. Ah, you don't like mobility. Well, it can be tricky, in particular with someone like him. I mean, he really knows how to use his mechanized units and run a player around. I've seen other players basically try to catch him, and then he basically runs around circles with them until he has what he has, wants them and actually annihilates them. He made him sound a lot scary. <laughs> Very scary. A lot well, scarier he's currently he one of the higher ranked players overall, so I mean, he can be nasty. Well, I believe we have the current top three German players in the ladder in the, the quarterfinals, uh, three of the four um, seeded players in particular. Uh, and the other players are no slouches. Obviously, we've got you, that's proved to be, um, you know, I'd, I'd say you're the dark horse of the tournament so far. <laughs> Which is, you know, people have always said, oh, Dane casts games, but he's not particularly good. But uh, you seem to be, uh, you were good enough to beat Alton. Alton's a player that's beat some of the top players in the game. So, mm. you know, I, I, I don't want to put any money on you, <laughs> but uh, I'll be definitely uh, eager to see what I happens. Put money on me either. I mean, I'm worried about Gap. I'm also a bit worried about Cataclaw if I beat him for that. Um, although CS might still actually take on Cataclaw. Yes, that's. He's not half bad either. If I was to talk objectively, I'd think that was the most evenly pitched battle um, Cataclaw versus CS. Um, that's that's the one I'm banking on possibly going the distance. In terms of the distance, we've got a five, it's best of five now that gets engaged. Um, we've got um, Semoski Winter, Longro reverse positions, which you kindly um, demonstrated for us in the round of 16, and then possibly a Kolodny Firma final. What do you think about that map change? Well, it was a bit unexpected, and Semoski Winter in particular is a bit of an interesting choice. Ah, certainly yeah. my favourite map, but you know, still, I mean, it's different. Might offer some different play for certainly. Definitely, I think it's going to put a spanner in the works for a few people. But then again, Longer Skya, um, that's in my mind one of the most balanced maps, and people were um, disgruntled about that. I don't think you can make everybody happy with map choices. I'm not. Well, a fan I of think it's Carol. I get good to shake things up a bit. I mean, like Langer Skya has been featured a lot lately, and any kind of stream. Exactly. So I, I definitely not a fan of longer sky or winter in my mind. I think the he there's a little bit too much heavy snow, um, and Semoski does doesn't have blizzards. So I think it's possibly the best snow map you could use for tournament play. Hmm. Yeah, it certainly offers up some interesting moves there with the ice as well. Well, it'll be interesting. It's only the first and second games for best of five, so it'll definitely we will see a summer variant um, regardless of what happens. And it's been nice talking to you, Dane. Yeah. Same to you. Best of luck for your match this week. I uh, hope all goes well on the battlefield. And if not, I hope. So do not. I. <laughs> <laughs> and if not, I hope it. You know, you hope you show some interesting strats and take him by surprise. That's what we want to see. Yup. And uh, thank you for watching, everybody. You can catch these games that, well, on Saturday. We're going to do a similar kind of thing with it, Kai Fung. Um, hopefully my ISP doesn't choke me and we have to... <laughs> no, it will choke me. I will probably be streaming from Roger's stream. But uh, thank you for listening to this and thank you for watching and uh, goodbye.